Hey, what is up guys? This is Electric Pulse 61 here. And uh, today I'm back sooner than last time, that's for sure, but still a little later than I would have liked to be. Sorry about that. Anyways, today I am back with another Greenfoot tutorial, I believe round number four. And I promised last time we would do collisions with platforms for our little jumper dolphin up here to jump onto and you know hop around on. Right now he hops around and the only thing he can really jump on is the ground. So we're going to put a platform like here and we'll, you know, jump up to it. So that's the objective for today. And uh, I apologize in advance if you hear any like ruffling sounds or anything. I'm sitting on two green bags because my chair is being used by someone else right now. So I had to make do and stack two like large bean bags on top of each other. And that's what I'm sitting on right now. Anywho, <laughs> let's get right into this. And the first thing we need to do is obviously make ourselves a platform class. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and make a new subclass of actor. We're going to literally call it platform. And for the uh, picture, we will do a brick under objects. So that's what we'll do. We compile. Everything works swimmingly. So in this platform class, it's going to be a very simple class. The platform isn't going to do much. It's just going to kind of sit there and the jumper is going to do most of the collision detection work. But we do need to open the editor and make a few changes because if we go over here and we make a new platform, it's a tiny little brick. And I mean, what kind of platform is that? That's so small, we need to put at least 10 of them in a row and that would just get so frustratingly annoying. So to save ourselves a lot of headache from doing that, we're going to use constructors to do what we want. We're going to have it resize itself upon creation. That's what we're going to do. So, we're going to learn something new today about constructors. You can have more than one. You don't need to just have one constructor. You can have two constructors and they both do somewhat different things. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have first public platform. There we go. A generic constructor. This is what's called whenever the platform is created. We're very used to seeing constructors now. So what we're going to do is there are going to be two parameters for this constructor. We're going to have a width and a height. So that whenever this platform is created, it can be initialized with a specific width and height in mind. So let's just say I want to have a really long and thin platform, I can do that. If I want to have more like a square, I can do that too. All of that without needing to make more than one. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to go into the image file of this platform because right now it's this brick. And so Greenfoot makes this really easy. They have this class called Greenfoot Image. You can even see it up here at the top in this package import, which we haven't gotten into very much. We'll get into that later. But I believe I mentioned in the first episode, this has all of the Greenfoot methods. One of those comes from the Greenfoot Image class. It has all a bunch of stuff having to do with the images that these actors use. So anyways, we can get greenfoot image, that's the class name, it's the type, and we'll call this image, is equal to get image. So what that does is it will take this brick image and assign it to this image variable. From there, what we need to do is we need to scale it to the specific bounds that we have up here. So we will do just that, we'll do image.scale width and height. And then from there, we need to set the image back. Because now that we've changed the image, we have to reassign it back to this object. So what we would do is we would do set image, image. There we go, and we compile. No syntax errors. Very nice. Now, multiple constructors. We're going to do another one right above this. Public platform. Now in this one, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to leave this empty. This is going to be the default constructor. It's always a good idea to have a default constructor. So how are we going to handle this? Well, we could copy this entire line of code here, this entire block, and just have default values instead of set, scale, width, and height. We just do like 300 and 200 or whatever. But what we need to do is we need to call this constructor, which we can do because this is all an instance. I haven't really gotten into static versus non-static and all of that stuff with instances and objects. But just know that since this is an object, 
and we're creating a platform object in the world class, we're allowed to address this instance. So whenever, if we were to have two bricks, right, one here and one over here, let's just say these were both bricks, for example. Whenever we call this, we use the this keyword here, that's like saying, okay, if this hippo calls this keyword, then it's applying to this one. Same thing here. If the dolphin uses this, it's applying to this dolphin. Not any dolphin, not all of them. Just this one. And so that's kind of what the word this does in Java. So what we can do is we can use this and then two parentheses here to signify a constructor. And we can pass it a width and a height. So basically, if you learn nothing here, just know that whenever we do this in parentheses, that's the same thing as calling a constructor. So we can pass it two variables and create it to a default one. So what are we going to have the default be? I'm going to do 100 in the width and we'll do 25 on the height. That's what we'll do. That'll be the default. And let me get to the sum up here. Okay, so what do we have here? What we can do now is we can go into the world. We can create a new object, call it platform, platform equals new platform. Now here, we can't, we could just leave it blank. In fact, that's what we're gonna do at first. And we'll add the object, platform, and we'll add it at 450, 400. That'll, that's just a random spot. Okay, so when we compile, there we go. There is our platform. That's what its default size is. Remember before, it was just a small little brick. We've made it bigger now. It's much larger, it looks like a platform that we could actually use. Now let's just say we want it to be longer than that. So let's just say we wanted it to be 200 long and 25 high. What does that do? Now it's longer. So you can either specify a specific width and height, or you can leave it blank and let it use the default width and height. And that's what I wanted to go over with constructors and multiple constructors. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're basically done with this platform class here. We're not going to be touching this at all for the rest of the episode. So now our focus is going to be shifted to this jumper class here. And we need to get it to land on platforms. Right now, we only have it checking for whenever it's at the bottom of the world. So we're going to need to add more to these if statements here. And we're going to need to say, okay, now if you're touching a platform, also stop moving. Now, what we could do is we could actually add in like or here, like add in the or and if on platform, do that too. But that would make this if statement ridiculously long, and every time we added more conditions, we just have to keep adding on. So what we can do instead is we can create a method that will return a boolean. So we can have a public boolean is on solid ground. So now what this method will do is we can put in here these conditions about is it on solid ground, is it on the bottom of the world, is it on top of the platform, all of that stuff, and we can just have it in one convenient method. Instead of having you know three conditions chained together, we can just have one easy condition there. So what we need to do is we can just copy all of this. In fact, we're just going to use Control X and cut it, and we're going to put it in here. So for now, we'll just leave this condition in here. We'll get rid of this. We'll replace both of these with is on solid ground. Both of these. Is on solid ground. There we go. So now whenever we compile, of course, we're going to get a syntax error down here. There we go. So now what we need to do, we need to create a boolean that we're going to return. So boolean is on Ground. There we go. And that's going to be default to false. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it default to false. And then we're going to have it go through a series of conditions. And if any of them are true, we're going to set this boolean to true. And then at the end, we're going to return it. So basically, if none of these are true, basically it's in the air, then it'll stay false and we'll return false. We're not on solid ground. But if it's on any of the solid ground conditions that we specify, then this will become true. And yes, we will be on solid ground. So, we just need to put an if statement here, is on ground equals true. Very good. So now, this achieves the exact same thing that we had before. If it's at the bottom of the world here, then it will return 
true and they'll stop moving. So as you can see, it's exactly the same. So now what we need to do is we need to add in detection for when he's on top of the platform. We need to check when is our dolphin character on top of the platform. So that's what we're going to do next. So what we need to do is we need to go into this is on solid ground method again and we need to add another condition. So what we need to do is we need to check, once again, we need to go into the image and check if this image is touching this image on the bottom. So that sounds pretty complicated, but it's actually not that difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two local variables, image width and image height. Int image width equals get image dot get width. And int image height is going to equal get image dot get height. So obviously this is the width and height of the image. The only reason why I'm using these here is because I don't feel like typing this out every single time. It takes up too much space, it's more tedious, and it's just a pain in the butt, and I don't feel like dealing with that. So now the condition. If some condition is on ground is equal to true. So what are we going to have as this condition? Well, first we need to check if the bottom left, which is around here, is touching this brick, or if the bottom right, which is around here, is touching the brick. We only need to check for those two because one of them is going to be touching the brick at all times if he's on it. So if it doesn't make any sense to you, just sit tight, it'll all make sense in a little bit. So first, if get one object at offset. This is a green foot method that will return a specific object at a specific offset from the center of the image, just like here. So you specify an offset, and it will tell you what object is there. So, inside of this get one object at offset method, what we need to do is we need to put in three arguments. We need to put in the x offset, the y offset, and the object we're looking for. So basically, x offset is going to be half the width right because the whole width of the image is obviously the whole image we need to look half the width of the image in either direction and half the height of the image in the downward direction so those are going to be our offsets so first the x offset is going to be image width divided by negative two that's the left side the y offset is going to be image height divided by two and the object is going to be platform dot class. So what this specific thing here is it will check the bottom left corner of this dolphin image and it will see if it's touching a platform. So this is not a condition. This will return the instance that it's touching or it will return null if it's not touching anything. So to turn it into a condition we have to set not equal to null. So basically if there is a platform in the bottom left then is on ground is now equal to true. So we also need to add a second one that's bottom left. We're going to copy this and paste it. The exact same thing. The only difference is that it's going to be the bottom right. So the bottom right is the exact same thing only we get rid of this negative sign. Otherwise it's the exact same thing. So now what does this do? This will determine whenever we are touching a platform. So now when I fall, as you can see, I am inside the block a little bit, which is a problem we will fix in the future. But we no longer fall through the platform. Likewise, down here we still go down there. So this is all working really well, but there's still a problem. What happens if we jump up from the bottom? We can jump right through it. Now, Maybe you want that. Maybe you want to be able to jump through your platform. You know, in Mario, you can jump through those bridge-like structures, so sometimes you might want that, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want it to be you bonk your head off the bottom and you fall back down, which we can do, and that's in fact what we are going to do right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another method. We're going to call this did bump head. I say that's an appropriate name. Did you bump your head off of the platform? And in here, we need to once again do something very similar to this. In fact, it's going to be the exact same condition, so we can copy this 
right on over, but instead of doing height downwards, we're going to do height upwards. We're going to look for the top left and the top right corners. And remember, negative height is upwards because this is zero and this is y equals whatever your maximum value is. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to do boolean bumped head and that's going to be default to false. And instead of is on ground, we're just going to change bump head. Go to true. And then at the end, we're going to return bump head. There we go. So what does this do? This will return true whenever we bonk our head off the bottom of it. So now we need to use that to stop ourselves from jumping through the block. We have the necessary tools to determine if we bumped our head. Now we need to use that tool to stop moving whenever we bump our head. All right, we're getting very close. So in this fall method is where we're going to be doing all of our work. So what we're gonna do is if we're not on the solid ground, we're gonna check for if we bumped our head. Did bump head. So what happens if we did bump our head? Well, we're also going to set our velocity equal to zero. So that's a very simple, quick, easy solution. So now we can go down, jump there, and if we jump up, uh-oh, we get stuck. That's not good. We don't want to get stuck. We want to bounce off and fall down. So what do we have to do here to solve this little problem where we have that we stick? Well, one solution that I thought of is we can check if we're moving, right? Because you only stick when you're not moving, right? Up and down. So what we can do is we can change this else if here, is we can say if your velocity is less than zero and you bumped your head. So what that means is if you're moving upwards and you bumped your head, nothing else. It's only if you're moving upwards and if you bumped your head. If you're not moving, nothing happens. So let's see what that did, that quick fix there. We jump and just like that, we bounce off the bottom. But there's still a problem where we can get stuck inside of the platform. As you can see, his nose dips into the platform, which is not what we want. And if we restart, we fall halfway through it, and that just looks bad. And we poke out, it's just, it's just ugly, and it's not what we want. It doesn't look good. So what we need to do is we need to go into our jumper, and we need to check if we are inside of a block. Now we could create another method, is inside of block, but there's a simpler way to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to do multiple things when we are on the ground. We're going to first of all stop moving so we don't continue to fall. And then we're going to do something inside of a while loop. Now why are we doing something in a while loop? Well, the reason why is because we don't want our guy to move. We don't want to see him go, you know, fall into the platform and then slowly rise back out of it every time it updates. We don't want that to happen. We want it to just look like he landed on top of it. We don't want it to look like he landed in the platform at all, right? So what we need to do is we need to do this in a while loop so it happens instantly before the game even has a chance to update. So what are we going to do as our condition? Our condition is going to be while is on solid ground. Now that might be weird. Because of course it's always going to be in solid ground because we're in solid ground in the first place. So, bear with me here. While we are in the solid ground, we are going to set our location to get x, get y, minus 1. So while we are in the solid ground, while we're on the ground, we're going to move upwards. Now this causes a problem, because this will only stop moving us up once we are no longer touching the ground. And then we won't be able to jump, because we have to be touching the ground in order to jump. Oh, I guess now. How fun. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. We need to be able to make sure he's still touching the ground. So once we move off the ground, because this will only stop once he's not on the ground anymore. So once that happens, we have to move them down once more. So set location, get x, get y, plus 1. So what does this do? 
you touch the ground. Our dolphin comes in, he touches the platform. He's now on the ground. According to our is on solid ground method, he is on solid ground. Before the game even gets a chance to update, he will now move up until he's no longer touching the ground. As you can see, there's a gap between him. So now, he's above the ground. That's what that wild loop did. And then after that, we move him down by one so that he's just barely touching the ground. So what does this do whenever we run it? As you can see, he no longer sticks inside of the platform. Down here, he no longer goes too far down. So as you can see, we have solved the problem of falling into the platform, and we now have a solid platform on both sides. However, it's still not perfect. Did you just see that? He can teleport to the top. And this is better seen if we go into this and we make this a much taller platform. If we make it something like 400 blocks tall, so that it stretches all the way like a wall, he climbs instantly to the top, which is what the while loop is supposed to do. So nothing is wrong, this isn't a bug, it's just the way our code is set up. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the sideways, we need to add limits to when he can move left and right. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. We're going to check, okay, is there something to the right of me, is there something to the left of me? So we're going to check, can he move left, and can he move right? But, that's all I have time for in this episode, so you'll just have to wait and see the next one to get that useful information. So if you guys like the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, if you're really feeling special, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm hoping to get a new video out sometime in the next couple weeks, hopefully I can get it out a little sooner than this one. I'd like to get one out every week or so, but we all know how I get with updating videos. So just bear with me, hopefully I won't take too long to get this next video out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, you guys are so awesome, bye bye.